The following method describes the design storm excess precipitation. The method is described in the first part of example 9.13 and summarized in table 9.8, computation of a 30-minute 10-year design storm. The method is not described in significant detail. This method was first developed by the SCS, or Soil Conservation Service, to calculate the excess precipitation from a hiatograph. It actually shows temporal distribution of the excess precipitation, PE. Thus, it's not constant like the phi index method. Next, it was developed specifically for design storms. Thus, an IDF, intensity duration frequency curve, will be used in these examples. It is based on a specific location, soil type, land use, hydrologic condition, and anesthetic moisture content. And it is based on a specific duration and frequency that the IDF curve will use. So imagine you have a hiatograph as shown with precipitation on your y-axis and time on your x-axis. You then will see you still have your initial abstractions, IA, which occurs before you see direct runoff. Next, you will have the losses, FA. This is continuation of, of abstractions even with the start of runoff. And finally, you have PE, or excess precipitation. So let's do an example to kind of mimic this. So I've created a table at the bottom of this image, where it shows time, design intensity, design rainfall precipitation, a delta P, the design P, the summation, of the P, the summation of excess precipitation, and finally the change in excess precipitation. So the procedure. First we need to determine a location, a design storm, and a frequency. For this example, let's assume we're in the non-mountainous areas of Orange County, and we're given an intensity equation as follows. I is equal to 15.56 T raised to the negative 0.573 power. The, lo the storm lasts for one hour and it gives you 10 minute increments. The curve number, which was based on the soil, land use, and various conditions, is 89. So, we will start by putting in our time, 10, 20, 30, all the way to 60 minutes, since the storm lasts for one hour. Next, we will stick the time inside the intensity equation provided. So I is equal to 15.56 times 10 raised to the negative 0.573 will give us the 4.2 inches per hour. If we put 20 into the equation, it will give us the 2.8 inches per hour and so on. Next, we're going to calculate the design, the the depth of rainfall, which is the intensity times the time. So if we multiply the IDF column by the time over 60 to convert the units, we'd get 0.7 at 10 minutes. At 20 minutes, we would multiply the 2.8 by 20 divided by 60, we would get 0.9. We would repeat this for each of the subsequent rows. 1.1, 1.3, 1.4, and 1.5. It should be noted that I have rounded this significantly. If you do this in Excel, your values may vary slightly. Next, we're going to calculate the change in precipitation. So what you're seeing in column 3 is a cumulative. And so the way we get the change is the first step would be 0.7 minus 0 because at time 0 there is no rainfall. So it would give us 0.7 at time 10. 
At time 20, it would be 0 0.9 minus 0 0.7, which is 0 0.2. At time 30, it would be 1.1 minus 0 0.9, which would be 0 0.2, then so on. Next, we need to calculate what they call the design P. This is done by rearranging the delta P to create a precipitation distribution. The way this works is we have to rank the rows. So we look at the odd and the even rows. In the first cell, the highest odd row goes there. So if you count the rows, there are six rows. So we go to row five, and the value of the delta P in row five now goes to row one in the design P column. Now we'll go to row three, and that goes into the next spot, and then row one. On the opposite, we start and do even rows. So we'll go to two, then four, then six. By doing this, gives you a more realistic distribution of the rainfall. Rainfall usually starts off slow, picks up, and then drops off. Occasionally, you will have rainfall that looks similar to the delta P column, but this is very rare. Now, we're going to we're going to sum this column back up, and you should note that the bottom value of 0 0.5 is the same as you had in the in the original design P column. Now we need to calculate excess precipitation. This is done through the following equation. The cumulative rainfall excess is equal to zero when the precipitation in the summation column is less than the initial abstractions. If it's not, if the precipitation is greater than or equal to the initial extractions, then the summation or the cumulative excess precipitation is equal to the equation as shown. P minus initial abstraction squared divided by P plus 0.8s. To find the initial abstractions, that's equal to 20% of the storage quantity, S. S is equal to 1,000 divided by the curve number minus 10. So for this example, since the curve number is 89, we get a storage value of 1.24 and an IA of 0.2. So now we're ready to, to do our summation of excess precipitation column. So for the, for the first one, it is going to be 0. And the reason it's 0 is because 0.1 is less than 0 0.2. 0 0.3 is greater than 0 0.2. However, when you plug it into the equation, you get a value so small that it is pretty much 0. Next, since 1 is greater than 0 0.2, we use the equation above, P minus IA squared divided by P plus 0.8S, and we get 0.83. We're going to repeat this for the remaining 1.2, 1.4, and 1.5. There are slight losses, even though the numbers match the previous column. The reason they're almost identical is because of rounding. Finally, we're going to do a change in excess precipitation. So 0 minus 0, 0 minus 0. 0.83 minus 0 gives us 0.83. 1.2 minus 0.83 gives us 0 0.37. 1.4 minus 1.2 gives us 0 0.2. And 1.5 minus 1.4 gives me 0.1. So our excess precipitation for this example is 0 0.83, 0 0.37, 0 0.2, and 0.1. We'll do further examples in class to further solidify this concept.